What's up, CV Survivors? Today I have a different video and we're gonna be looking at Resident Evil 5 because I just felt like playing it and I felt like going back and seeing what's good with this game. After playing Resident Evil 5, I can definitely tell you that the game specializes in putting the player in high pressure situations. I feel like Resident Evil 5 never gets the love it deserves, but today we're gonna give that love to Resident Evil 5 as I talk about my experience about replaying it back in 2020. So I played this game on Veteran, and I remember back when I played this game in eighth grade, I had to play it online with somebody on Veteran because that game was hard as shit. And it's definitely still hard as shit to this day. When the game first starts off, it definitely establishes that you will be getting overwhelmed and you will be getting surrounded a lot. The game definitely wastes no time when it comes to getting it into those high pressured situations so starting off, man, the beginning of the game was definitely hard. It's like the enemies were very good at surrounding you and getting behind you, and I felt like they were actually way more aggressive than the AI in Resident Evil 4. In Resident Evil 4, it's like enemies would surround you, and they would have their axes or whatever they can throw at you too, but I feel like in this game, way more enemies actually try to hit you, and they even lunge at you farther than what they do in 4. The intro definitely did get very chaotic though, and it's kind of funny because I definitely got grabbed a lot and I definitely got hit a couple of times. It's honestly a while that I survived all that because Sheva was far away and she was low on health too, but she was on her P's and Q's and she still came all the way over here. Got the revive and we got the S rank. Guess it means I got a little bit of sauce. Y'all, I got so lucky at the end. There's a lot of times when I'm playing this game and I feel like the enemy's AI outdoes itself sometimes and it just leads to some really weird moments. I don't know what it is with these Uroboros transformation enemies, but on Veteran, they have so much HP, it's like they take more shots than a college freshman's first party. The first boss, honestly, is nothing crazy. I'm not a big fan of the design of it either. It just looks like a hentai monster with some boils on it. So I don't know if you guys know, but my favorite Resident Evil game is definitely Resident Evil 4. Everybody's hip to Dr. Salvador, the chainsaw guy in Resident Evil 4, but I definitely gotta put some respect on El Negro chainsaw guy in Resident Evil 5. And the reason why is, for whatever reason, he has so much more health than the chainsaw guy does in Resident Evil 4. Even if you were to put it on professional, the chainsaw guy in Resident Evil 5 has way more health on veteran. I am dumping pistol clips, shotgun clips, rifle bullets, and I'm meleeing him and he's still not dead. Once he's added to the equation, you are definitely automatically in a high pressured situation. You know, I forgot what made him unique too, and that's his dirty secret when you think you kill him. You better make sure that chainsaw's off. And that's exactly why you make sure the chainsaw is off because that man will play dead and he will come back and get you. What else makes El Negro Chainsaw Guy unique is once he plays dead and gets back up, he goes into another form where he just swing in the chainsaw and it becomes a one hit kill. There are a lot of moments during my playthrough where certain areas were just hard and one of those areas was definitely the mines. The region was hard because a lot of enemies were transforming and a lot of them were just spamming dynamite. A section I honestly didn't like in this game was the turret part, especially when you fight El Gigante. The reason I didn't like this boss is you literally have to hit every shot in the turret to get him off of you. And he has a move which if he hits you twice with it, you automatically die. Like the boss just had too much health and it was just really cheap and annoying. Water levels in games usually have a bad stigma, but I actually think Resident Evil 5 has one of the best water levels. So you have to drive your boat to three different islands to find three different emblems and put it in a classic Resident Evil door. The Salt Marsh is definitely my favorite area of the game, and I think they really did a good job at introducing the tribal men too. You see this man stabbed all up by spears, and then you finally go out there and you meet him. 
When you first encounter the tribal men, you definitely learn quick that they're agile and they are a threat. Things get pretty hectic and these guys will surround you quicker than the mode on your shower curtain. I don't remember everything about this game, but I do remember one thing and it's that when you get to the marsh, buy the stun rod so you can kill the crocs in the water. And honestly, that didn't even help me all the time because they still killed me. So realizing that it takes definitely a couple of swings to kill the crocs, I realized that I'm a seasoned veteran Resident Evil player. So you know what I do? I do the dash on them. One of these islands had me legit stressing, like you are so overwhelmed. I don't even remember Resident Evil 4 having that many enemies at once on the screen. Like a lot of people say Resident Evil 5 is all about action, but I am legit stressing and trying to figure out how I'm gonna kill all these people and do I even have the resources to do so. Like this is what Resident Evil 5 is about and it's about getting out of high pressure situations due to swarms of enemies. Honestly, in this game, I felt like the shotgun isn't reliable. And then you have that guy transforming into like the dinosaur or burrows form. And that thing takes hella shots to kill. And then you got to watch out for the tribal men trying to turn you into a shish kebab. And I'm just trying to figure out how can I handle all these enemies. As of that part was already wild enough, it only gets crazier. We're introduced to a new enemy, which is this tall ass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar ass nigga. These guys eat anything and they'll eat a whole clip of magnum ammo and still be good. This section has even more enemies than the previous section and things just get so hectic. This is definitely in my top three hardest sections in this game. You can see I'm running trying to stay alive and I decide to go up here to camp them and to figure out what should I even do and there's just no breaks from these enemies just running up on you. I just now noticed Sheva jump down there. What you doing? But I really feel like this section truly highlights what Resident Evil 5 is about and that is being overwhelmed and sworn by enemies. It's like you can't even get a breather during this part. We have Ouroboros neck man trying to get us. I climb up the ladder and next thing you know Kareem jumps up in here too and he kicks me but Sheva's always on her P's and Q's and gets the revive. We dropping it like it's hot up here. But honestly, I don't know how I survived all of that, but that section is wild. When you're at this area of the game, you could be running away from people. You can end up going into that area where you get trapped and then you have to deal with people with explosive bows. And if you got a crowd following you too, they're going to jump in there from above too. So it really just gets so wild up in there. I really like this section of the game though, because it's very overwhelming. It's very difficult but they still give you a lot of resources to deal with all that stuff, unlike later sections of the game. This game is always putting you in high pressure situations and a lot of times I found myself actually just running away from a lot of enemies and mini bosses because I'm not gonna contribute a whole bunch of resources to getting rid of a mini boss or a whole bunch of enemies when I can just run away. Sometimes I don't even think I did have enough ammo to get rid of all the enemies unless I'm gonna be swinging that stun rod all day. I'm not even gonna lie, as the game continued to go, I really started dying a lot, especially during the segments where you're separated from Sheva so you can't get revived. Resident Evil 5 definitely has some iconic locations and one area I will never forget about is when you're underground and there's like that sunray area. This area is hard and we have Keem jumping off the thing, you already know I'm running. The crazy thing is, if you have any other enemy coming to the areas where the sun beams, they die. But Keem, however, he will just block it. I will always remember this section of Resident Evil 5 because it is so frustrating. This man, Keem, really followed me all the way to the main gate. Did you guys not peep that view? Resident Evil 5 doesn't really have that many puzzles. I think this is the only puzzle in the game, to be honest. But everyone remembers it and it's annoying and it's the light puzzle. As the game continues to progress, the enemies seem to get more HP and durability, leading to some pretty crazy moments. Fighting a herd of lickers, and lickers are my most hated enemy in Resident Evil. Regular enemies start to begin to wear helmets, face masks, and body armor. Then they start toting guns too. 
The game gives us a cover mechanic system and it's decent, but it's still flawed. When you shoot your shotgun, he still conks it in midair so you can still get shot, which is dumb. Like, why doesn't he just do that behind cover? The cover mechanic system too, also, is just not dynamic enough. Like it keeps you stuck in place and it can lead to some really bad situations. Like I'm trying to kill the Earl Burroughs person, but then I have to worry about the people shooting at me too. And I end up dying because of it. This game starts to be really stingy with giving you ammo towards the end of the game. Then you be fighting all these strong ass enemies and it makes you use some very unconventional methods to beat them. An example of this is when you first fight JJ. This guy has legit like 15,000 HP and the Magnum only hits at 1,300. It took me so many times to get past this part and I felt like it was almost impossible. And the way I did it was so champ and ugly too, but hey, whatever you gotta do. As if things couldn't get any worse, the game decides to give you two bugs with one hit kill moves chasing you. And on top of that, they give you two JJs to worry about with a side of enemies with AK-47s. To be honest, the way I dealt with this is I ran from them, I found me a nice small room to camp in, and I sprayed that shotgun into each and every one of them, died. When it came to the Jill boss fight, all I really did was knife her and I started tossing her like some salad. And I gotta say, man, did this boss fight not age well. When it came to Wesker during the final boss, I did not have any ammo and I was definitely not about to swing the stun rod for 10,000 times trying to kill this guy. So I bought me a rocket launcher and I just did him. So when it comes to Resident Evil 5, I really feel like the game really shines at putting you in those high pressured situations where you have to face hordes of enemies and you have to figure out how can you deal with them or you have to decide to run from them. On Veteran, I ran from them because you just do not have the ammo to deal with all that. A lot of people say this game is just action, but I feel like it's way more to it than that. Like, I feel like they probably played it on easy and actually didn't have to run away trying to figure out what to do, what hordes of enemies chasing after you. Though this game doesn't really have a lot of the horror element that 4 had, it still took 4's schematics for the enemies and it upgraded what they do like the enemies are way more aggressive so i think it's a little weird if you don't like resident evil 5 but you like 4. i think they missed an opportunity to implement some horror especially at night and a lot of people be out here complaining about sheva what honestly sheva's the goat and i honestly didn't have a lot of issues with her learn to control your ai i gave her an smg and a rifle and used her as my backpack she was always on point when it came to breaking me out of a hold. She always revived me when she could. I stamped she had 100% accuracy too. She might spaz out on you too, bro. You gotta be careful. Slow down! It's hot enough to shoot as it is! Hey, bro. You guys have gotta peep this clip. She's really out there on the belt with the bug with the one-hit kill move. Hey, we gotta see what happens. She really crossed the bug up. And the zombie on the belt. Telling you guys, shove us the goat. See guys, when you're nice to your AI, they're nice to you. So let me know what you guys think about Resident Evil 5 in the comments. Remember, Sheva approves of you subscribing to this channel. And Resident Evil 4 Retrospect is on the way. But that's all I have for today. And remember guys, vibe out.